humans. This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on humans. You are listening to the third. You are listening to the third part, part three, which contains section five, including the topics of psychology, sleep and dreaming, consciousness and thought, motivation and emotion, and sexuality and love. The third part begins now. Humans, from Wikipedia. The free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Section five, psychology. The human brain, the focal point of the central nervous system in humans, controls the peripheral nervous system. In addition to controlling, quote, lower, end quote. Involuntary or primarily autonomic activities such as respiration and digestion. It is also the locus of higher order functioning such as thought, reasoning, and abstraction. These cognitive processes constitute the mind, and along with their behavioral consequences, are studied. In the field of psychology, generally regarded as more capable of these higher order activities, the human brain is believed to be more intelligent in general than that of any known than that of any other known species. While some non-human species are capable of creating structures and using simple tools. Mostly through instinct and mimicry, human technology is vastly more complex and is constantly evolving and improving through time. Sleep and dreaming. Humans are generally diurnal. The average sleep requirement is between seven and nine hours per day for an adult. And nine to ten hours per day for a child. Elderly people usually sleep for six to seven hours. Having less sleep than this is common among humans, even though sleep deprivation can have negative health effects. A sustained restriction of adult sleep to four hours per day has been shown to correlate with changes in physiology and mental state, including reduced memory, fatigue, aggression, and bodily discomfort. During sleep, humans dream. In dreaming, humans experience sensory images and sounds in a sequence which the dreamer usually perceives more as an apparent participant than as an observer. Dreaming is stimulated by the pons and mostly occurs during the REM phase of sleep. Humans are one of the relatively few species to have sufficient self-awareness. To recognize themselves in a mirror, already at eighteen months, most human children are aware that the mirror image is not another person. The human brain perceives the eternal world through the senses, and each individual human is influenced greatly by his or her experiences, leading to subjective views of existence. And the passage of time. Humans are variously said to possess consciousness, self-awareness, and a mind, which correspond roughly to the mental processes of thought. These are said to possess qualities such as self-awareness, sentience, sapience, and the ability to perceive the relationship between oneself. And one's environment. The extent to which the mind constructs or experiences the outer world is a matter of debate, 
as are the definitions and validity of many of the terms used above. The physical aspects of the mind and brain, and by extension of the nervous system, are studied in the field of neurology, the more behavioral in the field of psychology, and a sometimes loosely defined area between, and a sometimes loosely defined area between in the field of psychiatry, which treats mental illnesses and behavioral disorders. Psychology does not necessarily refer to the brain or nervous system, and can be formed purely in terms of phenomenological or information processing theories of the mind. Increasingly, however, an understanding of brain functions is being included in psychological theory and practice, particularly in areas such as artificial intelligence, neuropsychology, and cognitive neuroscience. The nature of thought is central to psychology and related fields. Cognitive psychology studies cognition, the mental processes underlying behavior. It uses information processing as a framework for understanding the mind, perception, learning, problem solving, memory, attention, uh, language, attention, language, and emotion are all well researched as well. Cognitive psychology is associated with a school of thought known as cognitivism, whose adherents argue for an information processing model of mental function informed by positivism and experimental psychology. Techniques and models from cognitive psychology are widely applied and form the mainstay of psychological theories in many areas of both research and applied psychology, largely focusing on the development of the human mind through the lifespan. Developmental psychology seeks to understand how people come to perceive, understand, and act within the world and how these processes change as they age. This may focus on intellectual, cognitive, neural, social, or moral development. Some philosophers divide consciousness into phenomenal consciousness, which is experience itself, and access consciousness, which is the processing of things in experience. Phenomenal consciousness is the state of being conscious. Access consciousness is being conscious of something in relation to abstract thoughts. Various forms of access consciousness include awareness, self-awareness, conscience, stream of consciousness, Purcell's phenomenology, and intentionality. The concept of phenomenal consciousness in modern history, according to some, is closely related to the concept of qualia, a term used in philosophy to refer to individual instances of subjective conscious experience. Social psychology links sociology with psychology in their shared study of the nature and causes of human social interaction, with an emphasis on how people think towards each other and how they relate to each other. The, be the behavior and mental processes, both human and non-human, can be described through animal cognition, ethology, evolutionary psychology, and comparative psychology as well. Human ecology is an academic discipline that investigates how humans and human societies interact with both their natural environment and the human social environment. Motivation 
and emotion. Motivation is the driving force of desire be behind all deliberate actions of humans. Motivation is based on emotion, specifically on the search for satisfaction, positive emotional experiences, and the avoidance of conflict. Positive and negative is defined by the individual brain state, which may be influenced by social norms. A person may be driven to self-injury or violence because his brain is conditioned to create a positive response to these actions. Motivation is important because it is involved in the performance of all learned responses. Within psychology, conflict avoidance and the libido are seen to be primary motivators. Within economics, motivation is often seen to be based on incentives. These may be financial, moral, or coercive. Religions generally posit divine or demonic influences. Happiness, or the state of being happy, is a human emotional condition. The definition of happiness is a common philosophical one. Some people might define it as the best condition that a human can have, a condition of mental and physical health. Others define it as freedom from want or distress, consciousness of the good order of things, assurance of one's place in the universe or society. Emotion has a significant influence on, or can even be said to control, human behavior, though historically many cultures and philosophers have, for various reasons, discouraged allowing this influence to go unchecked. Emotional experiences perceived as pleasant, such as love, admiration, or joy, contrast with those perceived as unpleasant, like hate, envy, or sorrow. There is often a distinction made between refined emotions that are socially learned and survival-oriented emotions, which are thought to be innate. Human exploration of emotions as separate from other neurological phenomena is worthy of note, particularly in cultures where emotion is considered separate from physiological state. In some cultural medical theories, emotion is considered so synonymous with certain forms of physical health that no difference is thought to exist. The Stoics believed excessive emotion was harmful, while some Sufi teachers felt certain extreme emotions could yield a conceptual perfection, what is often translated as ecstasy. In modern scientific thought, certain refined emotions are considered a complex neural trait innate in a variety of domesticated and non-domesticated mammals. These were commonly developed in reaction to superior survival mechanisms and intelligent interaction with each other and the environment. As such, refined emotion is not in all cases as discreet and separate from natural neural functions as was once assumed. However, when humans function in civilized tandem, it has been noted that uninhibited acting on extreme emotion can lead to social disorder and crime. Sexuality and Love for humans, sexuality has important social functions. It creates physical intimacy, bonds and hierarchies among individuals, besides ensuring biological reproduction. Humans are one of only two primate species, the other being the bonobo, that frequently have sex outside of female fertile periods and that also engage in sexual activity for no other purpose than pleasure or enjoyment, 
but that is something that is very rare among other animals. Sexual desire, or libido, is experienced as a bodily urge, often accompanied by strong emotions, such as love, ecstasy, and jealousy. The significance of sexuality in the human species is reflected in a number of physical features, among them hidden ovulation. The evolution of external scrotum and penis suggesting sperm competition, the absence of a penile bone, permanent secondary sexual characteristics, and the forming of pair bonds based on sexual attraction as a common social structure. Contrary to other primates that often advertise estrus through visible signs, human females do not have a distinct or visible signs of ovulation, plus they experience sexual desire outside of their fertile periods. These adaptations indicate that the meaning of sexuality in humans is similar to that found in the bonobo, and that the complex human sexual behavior has a long evolutionary history. Human choices in acting on sexuality are commonly influenced by cultural norms which vary widely. Restrictions are often determined by religious or social customs. The pioneering researcher Sigmund Freud believed that humans are born polymorphously perverse, which means that any number of objects could be a source of pleasure. According to Freud, humans then pass through five stages of psychosexual development, the oral, the anal, the phallic, the latent, and the genital, and can fixate on any stage because of various traumas during the process. For Alfred Kinsey, another influential sex researcher, people can fall anywhere along a continuous scale of sexual orientation, with only small minorities fully heterosexual or homosexual. Recent studies of neurology and genetics suggest people may be born predisposed to various sexual tendencies. We now come to the end of the third part, part three, of the spoken article, Humans. The next and last part, part four, contains section six, which deals with the topics of culture, language, gender roles, kinship, ethnicity, society, government and politics, trade and economics, war, material culture and technology, body culture, religion and spirituality, philosophy and self-reflection, science and mathematics, and art, music, and literature. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at http colon slash slash creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0.